What is up Babylonians, Dan was here and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that's trying to take a bite out of Valheim's success. <laughs> the Rising. Let's take a look. So let's take a look firstly at, well, what, what can you do in this game really? So first of all, the most important part, the, the character creation screen. So here you can choose your body type, male, female. You can randomize as well to get a random uh, character set up. Or you can actually edit things like the skin tone, the eye color, the hair color, and change the features around on your vampire as well. So this doesn't affect anything in the game other than your uh, just just what you see as you play really. Um, but make it as beautiful, make it as ugly as you want to. Once you start the game you'll spawn in in a, uh, in a coffin in an underground cave. Um, this is your, your starting point and if you die uh, early on this will also be uh, one of your choices for a respawn point, uh, which we can cover a little bit later on as well. As you can see, the graphics are not the best. They're not terrible. Uh, but you know what? It's not the graphics that I'm looking into for these kind of games. It's uh, the originality and the, the actual fun levels of it as well. Uh, so as you can see, you can jump down uh, from uh, high terrain as well. So this will be useful later on in the game when you're uh, traversing sort of the, the hills and the mountains. Uh, but yeah, you can drop down uh, just to get a, a quick escape as well. So let's have a look at what the actual uh, game entails as well. So the game is very heavily combat orientated using both magic, as you can see here, and also your melee. And you do also have a ranged uh, option that you can use as well. So starting off here, you only have the ability to use a single spell and also your fists to attack, but you will later on uh, get, uh, you can craft your own weapons, which we'll go into as well. One of the most important things you need to consider in this game is as a vampire, you cannot stand out in the sun. So you have a certain level of sun resistance, uh, but as you can see there, whilst you're standing in the light, you will slowly uh, I say slowly, actually, be quite quick, you'll start to burn. Now, burning starts off small, maybe a, a couple of uh, HP, but then it very quickly escalates into dealing heavy, heavy damage to you. So you do not want to get caught in the sun if you're in a fight or without any shade around whilst it's daytime. Uh, then you need to really abandon that fight, if possible, and get to some sort of shade as quickly as you can. If you get yourself into a bit of a tough fight as well, you've got to obviously keep an eye on your health. Uh, as you can see there, we're almost burning there again. You are going to have to try and heal. Uh, healing comes with its own issues. So as you can see, you've got the blue bar and the black bar. The blue bar is your current health. The black bar is your maximum health. And then you do have like an empty space after that. That is your maximum health uh, outside of combat. So as you can see, we are healing now. Both bars are going up so our maximum health is going up and our current health is going up but in the middle there was as you could see blood yeah you can now see we are out of blood and that is actually very bad so whilst you're out of blood your health will be constantly going down uh, you need blood as a vampire to survive so you will need to make sure that you are uh, keeping yourself uh, fed whilst also keeping your health up. So here we are, ju we well, just managed to uh, eat a tainted heart to replenish the blood. Uh, but you can also get blood from feeding on uh, the enemy as well. So anything that you can kill, uh, so creatures, uh, humans, uh, well, anything that has blood really. So if you come up against an undead character, uh, or undead enemy, should I say. You will not be able to feed off them as they do not have blood. But creatures and humans uh, do have blood. And you have the different, uh, so different categories. So creatures 
You have things like rogues, brutes, uh, well, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of any more, but uh, there's plenty of different ones. So each one gives different uh, different uh, attributes towards your abilities. So creatures, for example, depending on what the the, the quality of the blood is, you will have a, uh, a boost to your speed. Uh, a warrior, you'll have higher damage output. Uh, rogue, you might have, uh, say, like faster healing, etc. So these will all come into play, uh, and you, you, you'll all want, you'll always want to try and get the highest quality blood possible. Uh, it doesn't do any, any make any changes to the amount of blood that you get. So if you were to feed on someone or something, you'll always fill up your your bar uh, completely. Uh, but you you don't get any bonuses in like extra healing or anything like that. It will always be uh, based upon what statistics that those actually do give you. So a good example of this will be here with this wolf. So once we've uh, consumed the blood, you can see it's 100% pure. So we've unlocked each and every tier, which is the, the movement speed, uh, sun resistance, the damage reduction. Increased health regeneration and boosting all of the above effects by an extra 30%. So all different types of blood will have these similar effects on them. One of the most important parts about this game is actually to build yourself a base. So you do this by building the, the castle heart initially. Uh, from there you sort of lay claim to an area around you. You then can't have anyone... Uh, build within a certain space around what your maximum uh, land claim is at that time. Uh, just so people can't just build right next to you and block off your front door, etc. Uh, so building is very important to allow you to build new structures, to allow you to craft different items, which we'll go through, but also to keep you safe from the sun uh, if you have built a castle. So you'd go from something like this, and eventually you'll have something a lot more like this beautiful place here. Uh, obviously it's not the perfect layout, it's not complete either, there's still plenty of uh, things we need to build in here, but this is what you'll eventually have uh, something similar to. But how do you get to have some of that, you ask? Well, first of all, you'll need to chop down some trees, break some rocks, Craft them into the correct materials, and then you can start building yourself some beautiful, beautiful castle walls. Along with that, you will then need to put in the flooring as well, uh, which we can't do in this clip here. We don't have the resources, but we're also uh, maxed out on the flooring. Uh, but yeah, you'll need to make sure that you maintain your castle as well with uh, these blood essences here. So the more you have, the longer that your castle is powered and fortified for, which prevents uh, or at least helps to prevent players from destroying your castle. Now crafting equipment is easy, all you need to do is make sure that you have the required materials and the required um, sort of workbench here, so there's different levels of workbenches and whatnot. Uh, but here, nice and easy copper sword requires copper ingots, planks, click it, it'll build and then you can use it. Getting access to stronger and newer weapons and armour can be done at the research desk which you can do by learning from a book that you have found in the wild or by discovering using the random chance if you have 50 paper it will give you a random uh, research. Now this game can either be played single player uh, with friends or on a server with many other players as well and as you can see here there is PvP combat as well. Now, this uh, other vampire decided to pick a fight with myself, not realising that I was a bit of a higher level than them. And if I'm being honest, if you're going to attack me first, I'm going to chase you down, hunt you down and try and kill you. So, had they not have attacked, I would have just continued running past them in my wolf form. But instead, they decided to, uh, to aggro me. Once you've killed them, you can then feed on them as well, uh, which basically finishes them off, so there's no chance of them uh, being picked up by a teammate. 
and then you have the opportunity to loot their corpse as well and get all of the goodies they have been collecting on their journey. And that is basically it for V Rising, really. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I would recommend anyone who has enjoyed a game such as Valheim in the past or a base builder, uh, looty, grindy kind of game, I would recommend this to them 100%. It's great fun. Uh, it can be difficult. You've got to gather quite a few resources, but as a whole, it is uh, an excellent game. Graphically, it's not perfect, but it's definitely plenty for, for what you would expect in a game like this as well. 